Niño de hombre, cartera, media. Le dieron la mejor oportunidad de hacer el bueno. Sí, pues pusieron la segunda tienda porque estaba. Tenían los tres. Por hacer fila para comprar unos zapatos hay que ser, hay que vender buenos zapatos. Cuando esos zapatos nuevos de España llegaban, la gente y uno preparaba las ventanillas con, con mucho adornito de Navidad y cosas, la gente se volvía loca con eso. Pero hay que tomar en consideración. Ah, sí, yo tengo también, me quedaron dos retratitos de eso. Pues yellow shoes. Yellow shoes. En el Centro Park. En el Centro Park. Entonces nosotros, los tres, decidimos poner una, una boutique. Y, y buscamos un sitio, encontramos un sitio en la, te, en la tercera avenida en el Bronx, que era de todas las tiendas, pues nosotros conseguimos algo pequeño y lo alquilamos. Y lo primero que hicimos fue buscarle el nombre, ¿verdad? Pues el nombre, el nombre que cogimos fue Mardi Gras. O sea, Mardi Gras de la tienda de Luisiana, pero Mardi con la Y. Y con, y con la bomba de fiesta y eso. Entonces fuimos... Yo dije, pero ¿cómo conseguimos que no hagan lo, lo lejos? Mira, mira el extremo de nosotros. Que la ropa tenga un label de nosotros. Y nosotros éramos jóvenes. Pues entonces yo busqué en el, en el libro, tú sabes que era un libro grande que, de teléfono. Yo busqué algo y llamé y me dieron sí, lo tenemos, lo podemos hacer. Yo dije, ok, pues hice una cita para dos días después. Y dos días después, los otros tres entramos a un sitio bien cachendoso, de eso de, de gente rica. Yo, yo, gente rica, gente rica con una forma muy grande que yo quiero. Y tú sabes que yo, que yo no miramos, y dice, no, 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 como lo que tuve en las películas. Y para otro, dice, yo tengo una cita con el señor, yo no sé, y me miraba como que no son clientes, no somos clientes de los de ellos. Entonces cuando este, yo fui, me senté con ellos y dije, yo lo llamé para hacer una, unos lejos para nuestro negocio. Pero el libro le dio el diseño, me dijo, yes, we could do that. Cuántas quieres, yo no sé cuánto le dijimos, pero va. Yo tengo un rollo. Pues la cosa es que eso, cuando me lo entregaron, primero que yo quería pagar, pues cuando lo entregaron, dice, mira, wow. Ahora tenía lo hecho. All right, we're here and we're looking for el sapo concho. It could be the sapo toro, but more likely the sapo concho so let's check it out here i am in my backyard and uh i have my light this is the perimeter of the fence so as you can see oh shoot something just touched me oh a cricket so let's see if we can see the, the cricket um i just lost them uh, if I cannot see the cricket, then we're gonna have to move on to the frog. Alright then. I can't see the cricket, so let's go back to the frog. Look at the little shell. Look at the shell right there. Um. Oh, look at the... It's on me, actually. Get off of me. The little cricket. Get off of me. It's so... Uh, I can't take it, it's too, it's too itchy, it tickles too much, <laughs> now get off of me, I can't, I can't, like, I'm gonna responsibly flick him off because I'm trying to look for that frog, okay, go, okay, okay, flick him off so he's now right there, get off of me, man, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know you like me, I know we're friends, but 
it's too it's too itchy right it it tickles too much right now look at that all right let's see there we go found him can you see right there el sapo concho or the bullfrog one of those two it's pretty big let's just zoom in from where we are right now and as you can see he's actually pretty big i can say he's like twice my hands or somewhere around that size and if we get closer look look at his glands what is that he's actually pr pretty big so i'm just gonna try to make him look better right now so let's get a little bit closer okay so these guys right here i'm not gonna do anything bro brother we're family so the, these guys right here as you can see look at my it's so hard right now to show but look i'm like a foot away from him and look at how big he is he's pretty big he's like my hand big he fits in my hand pretty comfortably but he's huge so these guys right here eat about anything meat insects cookies snakes whatever they can find they're gonna eat it little rodents since they're amphibians and this place is just extremely humid as a matter of fact we are in Rio Grande right now where it rains a lot here we're in a mountainous region it's super humid there's monte like plants everywhere monte manihua ata you know like all of that so where's the frog right there so there you have it you have the sapo concho and we're getting pretty close oh there's a coquille right close to us you see i can hear it but anyways that's the frog right there let's see how he looks you're a handsome little boy aren't you so yeah he's he's pretty handsome let me see one more shot one more closer shot without yeah he's pretty interesting he's pretty interesting wow pretty interesting pretty big so right now what i'm gonna do is that um oh he's moving so what i'm gonna do right now is that i'm gonna show you guys look pretty those plants right there are, are called helechos our friend right here is moving those plants right there are called are called helechos so it's actually pretty fun to be out here at night with this strong light as you can see it's a strong flashlight our frog friend just left and we're just exploring this forest type environment look at all that behuco all that behuco stuff there's a fence so yeah um this environment is pretty tropical is it's pretty uh it's pretty tropical this place right here hence the plants that we are seeing right now so what i'm gonna do is that now we're gonna move on to some coqui shots and coqui noises because today they're be um because today they are plenty and we're just gonna try to see if we can get some good footage of these night creatures who are mainly up at night so i am abaquetone borique subscribe um that's my compost right there we're gonna make a we're gonna make a cultivation 
En verdad que esto es una... In... Esto es una iniciativa jíbara. Y aquí les voy a, este, aquí les voy a presentar el palo de Guanábana. Esto va a ser un palo de Guanábana que me lo que me lo regaló un pana, me lo regaló un amigo. Y mi objetivo es tener muchos árboles, tener muchas plantas, quiero plátanos, ya mismo se lo, ya mismo se lo enseño. Quiero guarábana, quiero plátano, quiero guineo, quiero pana, quiero aguacate. Ya tenemos un par de cosas, pero mi objetivo es este, cultivar muchas cosas. La finca. Así que estamos aquí en el campo. Así que nada, ya les mostré mi planta. Que la acabo de sembrar. Show you my compost. La composta. It's not that very well made. And I'm going to cover it with, with a. With that uh, shower panel thing. Object. And this video is more of. I'm going to try to show you some nature. Uh, some nature creatures that like to roam at night you know so right now i'm just logging just hanging here uh, it's pretty interesting so i showed you the frog i showed you my my compost mi composta i have twigs i have lemons i have apples onions in there and i'm cover and i'm gonna cover it And I'm gonna cover it right now. So now I hope you enjoy some cookie shots and cookie noises. I'll see you later. So I already forgot that. Like the whole reason that I'm here filming that frog because that frog is eating my compost actually. <laughs> and let me just put this off, move it to the side. As you can see, we got apples, tomato, corn, mangoe, cebolla. Um, so we're gonna put a whole bunch of stuff that rot in our kitchen. And yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. But look at this grass, it's like, you see that? Okay, that's enough. So here, as you can see, I am covering my compost and that is going to create me some great compost. And in time, it's going to get bigger. I would say like six by six by six. I don't know. Something like that. Six by six by four, six by six by, by three, like um, length, width and height so this is a uh, half of an acre where i am standing right now look at the soil and it's a hill we cannot see it because it's nighttime but i used to have uh, a lot of uh i actually used to have a lot of plantains and a lot of trees and a lot of um, cultivation but my cousin came with a horse And he didn't know that I had plants and nobody really respected my cultivation. So the horse ended up just eating all of my plants and I quit. And that's what happened that I quit after that because after the horse ate my plants, I got really angry. So basically I stopped uh, cultivating from that moment on. But now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to protect my trees and I'm going to just be here all the time to I'm just going to be here all the time or as much as I can to protect and maintain 
my plants. Let's go check on those coquillas. On those coquillas. Locked and secured. And now I'm going to give a coqui presentation. This is a little room in this house where a lot of water is filtering in. So no matter how much, in the meantime, no matter how much we have been fixing and cleaning, things get a little um, dirty, but here are the coqui. And these seem to be one, spe one species. To be honest, it seems, it seems to be one, one species. And let's see them each one. Let's see them one by one, okay. So look at this one. It's pretty cute. Looks tan with olive uh, skin complexion. It, it's actually really little, it looks bigger from the phone, but I'm going to put my finger right next to it so you can see how big, how big he actually is. Look, oh shoot! <laughs> he just jumped like seven feet from there to like the ball, like literally the ball. So he should be right next to it. Where? Where? That's a... Uh, that's a that's a kakuro. Well, I don't think he wanted me to show you guys how big he actually was. So he was pretty insecure. So we, we got these two little lovebirds right here facing each other. Um, so let me put my fingers right next to them again just to show you how little they actually are. So these are my fingers. Sometimes they, they like to jump on people. But I don't mind, but sometimes I jump because I don't like being touched by nothing, actually. But I don't get scared or anything. I just don't want them to suddenly jump on me. <laughs> it scares me sometimes. They don't, they don't say when. So yeah, look at their color. Look at their color patterns. They're, they like to be in this corner because water filters down from the top down and they like to be moisture. It's part of their amphibious, amphibian health. So this one has more of a, of a leaf litter color, wet leaf litter color and that's the type of the type of coloration that you will want on a coqui where they will be in those type of places that are chalco, lodo, uh, fa este, fango, uh, mud, uh, muddy places and wet places like the campo here at Rio Grande. So let me just lean here. Oh, let me just lean here so you can have a still shot. They're actually pretty cute, pretty handsome. Sometimes you can tell when they're looking at you. Yeah, so yeah, so that's the cookie that I wanted to show you. Sometimes you have two here, sometimes you have three like you just saw. Sometimes you have like, <laughs> like 30 in one place. Socializing and singing eating they like to eat insects and a whole bunch of little a whole bunch of little insects and a whole bunch of little creatures and they are also food for snakes for frogs for birds so this is actually an, an animal that we need in our nature that we need in um in nature we need the coqui and it will we have another one uh, singing over there. Let's see if we can see it. So like I was saying, we need the... Wow, this one's super loud. Where, where is he? Where are you? You're so loud. Pues si, mi gente. Estos son unos animalitos que nosotros necesitamos. 
en nuestro entorno, en el ambiente para que balanceen el ecosistema este, y si no existiera verdaderamente hubiera un desbalance entre la naturaleza y el ambiente aquí en Puerto Rico You, you shy? You shy? <risa> en verdad que yo pienso que son bien lindos y espero que videos como este y otros videos puedan este, causarle a las personas un poquito más de este, conciencia en cuanto a en cuanto a estos animales por ejemplo hay muchos animales endémicos en Puerto Rico el coquí el guaraguau que es el, el, el que es el halcón colirrojo este, y básicamente que lo, que lo voy a poner aquí en la cámara porque no tenemos una foto o un video original de lo que voy a hablar pero básicamente lo que voy a poner aquí se llama la y este lo que yo voy a básicamente lo que yo voy a poner aquí se llama la iguaca la iguaca es la cotorra de puerto rico totalmente endémica de la isla de puerto rico boriquén yo lo que quiero es entregarle a la gente un poquito de conciencia para que sepan que estos animales son importantes dentro de nuestro ecosistema la iguaca está en un momento bien vulnerable este, este pájaro, esta cotorra de la Amazonia que es endémico de Puerto Rico está sufriendo por pérdida de hábitat este, la iguana que aquí se le dice gallina de palo la iguana y otros animalitos como las boas y las culebras pues este, no le están dando un, una buena ventaja a estas cotorras y las iguacas, las boas y todos estos, todo estos animales especialmente el ser humano estamos afectando lo que es la reproducción de este pájaro Así que en este video vamos a fomentar la conciencia, ¿verdad? Lo que es la conciencia taína, la conciencia jíbara, ¿verdad? Que es la conservación de qué. Tú lo que quieres conservar es el lenguaje, las tradiciones, las costumbres, las formas de hablar, los acentos la influencia de nuestro mismo patrimonio nativo la sangre, la familia indígena la cultura puertorriqueña todo lo que tiene que ver con lo que es puertorriqueño en el presente tenemos que preservarlo ya no podemos dejar que vengan otras culturas a arropar lo que es nuestro Así que voy a terminar este clip, este segmento, con ese pensamiento. Nos vemos pronto. Look at that. How interesting is that? This is a little creature. It's so loved by Puerto Ricans, right? Let's see him moving a bit. Move. Move, papi. Dale, papi. Muévete, papi, muévete, dale. 
Ay, pero no te caiga. No, no te caiga, mi amor. Que yo te quiero. Ay, no. No te vas allá. Yo te amo. Yo te amo. ¿Y tú? ¿Dónde tú estás? This is a baqueto ne borique and I wanna make this clip because I this happens to me a lot. This is a, a small uh, type racer type snake or gardener or garden snake or whatever you wanna call it. To me they're all so similar. This one, I'm sorry. This one, if you can see it, it's dead, and it's my fault. The, and how do I know that? Because the ants are already eating this little snake. And it's actually, it has really beautiful colors. If you look at it um, closely. With this light, or with, with this uh, camera phone, you may not see it, but it actually looks like it, it was like rainbow colored and uh but it's actually brown with like black dots like if it were to be a like like a boa it has like colors of a boa oh something just jumped on me sorry so it has colors of a boa uh, boa so like the ones that are from puerto rico and i have little charge uh, so I'm just gonna make this video quick and I'm just gonna point out that this is my fault and I tried to save him so that's why I I I accidentally, I accidentally hit him with the weed whacker he likes to hide under the grass these types these types of uh, snakes like like to hide under the grass like under the uh, the under layer of the grass I work with nature agriculture and I'm really sorry that this happened but I would like to um, record it but I am so sorry I tried to save him that's why I put him here to see if he would um, live but Unfortunately, the ants are actually eating down on his flesh in a matter of an hour or two. So I think that's where I hit him with the trimmer, right on the eye, right on the head, and I don't think it it uh, it uh, could uh, take that hit. So I'm really sorry, and I was gonna wait to see. Uh, he would uh, reclaim some life and then walk again and I was gonna um, make sure that he could go back to the wild but that doesn't seem to be the case so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna end the, the video shortly and uh, I'm so sorry I'm, I'm just so sad I hate killing animals any type of animal even insects or, or anything so I have this little flashlight as you can see um, so I'm gonna take this little gardener garden snake or little boa or racer or whatever it looks like a little Puerto Rican type of breed it looks like it comes from Puerto Rico it's de Puerto Rico but I'm so sorry it's like brown, um, tan, brown, copperish. You, you tell me. But it's such a beautiful color, and with the right lighting, it has like a rainbow 
essence to it. Let's see how big it is. I don't think these these um grow too big, so I'm gonna hold it with my hand, the the flashlight with my hand, and the phone with, with my left hand, and with my right hand, I'm just gonna show you how big this snake is. I have little hands. I'm a full five nine man, but I still have little little hands, hands the size of a of a woman of a woman you know so just look at how big this snake is it's double the size of like my hands look at it so i'm gonna take it i'm gonna pick it up and i'm gonna take it to the compost so this is not even my indigenous belief this is not my taino you know this is not my uh this is not my taino belief this is look at that this is my belief um i don't hurt any animals unless it's to eat them for sure you're not gonna get on me look at my slippers oh he's gonna get on me so yeah so look at my fingers they're like so tiny <laughs> i don't know if you ask me my fingers are hairy on 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 some parts they're tiny um and my but not hairy all over the, the place it's just on some parts and uh my nails are pretty tough for some reason but my toes are really tiny so i think that my toes resemble if you go and google your toes from your ethnicity my toes should be um roman egyptian or something like that so I would say Roman, Egyptian at the same time, like mixed, maybe Mediterranean or something. But enough of that. So I'm gonna take him to the compost, and I'm gonna tell him that I'm sorry, tell nature that I'm sorry for what happened. This always happens because when I work, they actually like to hide below the grass. It actually can get up to here when they call me and it, you just can't see them they're like inside of the grass on the under layer it's very hard to save these little these little creatures so i'm gonna put him in the compost and he will go back to the earth so i know it's pretty dark in this place but if you can hear me i will guide you to what i'm trying to say this is one of my compost uh, buckets. Why do I have it here? Because a whole bunch of scavengers, animals, lagarto, salandija, pájaro, chango, gato, you know, anything, cats, uh, young Bigfoots, nah, I'm just kidding with, with that one. Young Sasquatch. Well, scavengers in uh, night and, uh, and creatures, uh like to go into my compost when I put interesting stuff. So I have this bucket for these type of things and that's the little body that I said that I was gonna put in the compost. I'm gonna leave my sister to take care of this and I'm gonna leave. But that's one section of the compost. There's like meat there and stuff like that. So you know you can imagine animals come like cats and stuff like that. There we go. The Chihuahua, a Chihuahua. Okay, so that's another section of my compost. As you can see, it's just a whole bunch of grass. I'll be coming back with more information and with more clips and with more videos. So I'll see you on the next video. And I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry that happened to you. And I hope you can rest in peace. All right. So my dog keeps barking at cats that come and go it's a little chihuahua i've been trying to leave but i've been night herping and i found uh, so i cannot leave and i found this amphibian i hope he doesn't pee on me but it's one of those sapo conch oh he left he left yeah. it's okay i'm fast sapo conch oh shoot he's onto me Sapo Goncho, Sapo. 
what type of creatures can you find in Puerto Rico there are, and there are actually a whole bunch and I want to show you guys so that's it for this guy give him a name and I'll see you on the next clip and the next video